Welcome to Berlin. I'm David. Don't shoot. I've, I've got your shoe. You're on. That was me from the moment. Um, James, this is a spy thriller, and um, you've done Wanted, which was brilliant. How would you compare the two, and uh, why do you love spy thrillers so much? Uh, I don't know that I do really. I just like the characters, and I like the I like I like duplicitous characters. I like people that have that are guarding a secret. Uh, people that are guarding a secret not only from the other characters in the movie, but from the audience. I mean, I've been offered other spy movies that I haven't done because they were just, right. they weren't interesting. You know. This character, I would describe him. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm probably wrong. As a cross between a raver, a, a pimp, a club owner, yeah. and a secret agent at the same time. How did you how did you create that persona, that flamboyant uh, person? I, I, I don't know. He was somebody that was the. I decided he was going to be somebody that enjoyed pushing every limit possible and so. testing every boundary, whether that be personal relationships, whether that be. Uh, governmental relationships with other countries and diplomatic relationships with other countries and um, or whether that be physical boundaries with just how close you could get to somebody or how, sh how much in their face you should get with them. You know. But I read this thing about MI6, um, Britain's spy organisation if you like, or um, uh, intelligence organisation, international intelligence organisation, and post World War Two, it was it was suggested that they were quite interested in recruiting um, alcoholics, drug addicts, and gay men, particularly. Oh, really? Yeah, particularly because they wanted people who had experience of hiding something massive about themselves, but still working um, functionally and well within society and in the workplace, and never letting anybody know. And they found the people that fit that bill made excellent spies, particularly abroad. Um, but and particularly with alcoholics and drug addicts, they were they fit the bill brilliantly. But they would also die quite young, which was great <laughs> because they'd burn out fast and they wouldn't retire with a ton of secrets that they had to worry about them having. So I decided I was going to make him a, a full like a full blown alcoholic and drug addict. Uh, I also wanted to make him gay, but they wouldn't let me because <laughs> because Charlie's. Um, has a bit of gay action, so they didn't want my character to be gay, unfortunately. But um, I thought that was really interesting, so I decided to sort of base my entire character around that and around this idea that he, was, he wasn't he was going to live very long, uh, and he kind of knows it. Even if nobody kills him or stabs him or blows him up because he's a spy, he probably wouldn't live until he was 40. So, yeah, I wanted somebody who was combusting and who was on the edge of of blowing up at any moment. Do you think you would make a good spy? Or not? No, but I'm, I think <laughs> I think I'm. I don't know if these things make a good spy, but I think I'm quite manipulative and I'm quite good oh, right. at manipulating personal relationships. So that might be a good facet as a spy, but I don't mm. know if that alone is enough. And I heard somewhere that you broke um, your hand before shooting. Yeah. Does that explain the cast which, yes. you, which you were wearing? I broke my hand while I was making Split uh, in the last couple of days of the shoot. I phoned up the director of this movie and I said, look, I'm really sorry, and, but I've broken my hand. And, uh, and if you want to fire me and hire somebody else, I, I would completely understand. And he was adamant, no, 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 we don't want to do that. And you put uh, the microphones in there and, and everything. Yeah, so we decided that we would keep it and actually use it and make it something that the character, you know, uses to his advantage. Uh, and not really talk about it for quite a long time, like, not really explain it until near the end of the movie, which I loved. Um, so, yeah, but the, 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 the irony is, after a week of getting to the film shoot with the cast on, the doctors were like, we should take this off now. And I was like, but I need this for the movie. Oh, this hand, I need this for the movie. And so we had to make a fake cast after the real <laughs> cast came off that was made of rubber that I could slip off and on. Amazing. Thanks so much, James. Hey, thanks, man. I hope it's going to be Cheers. a great success. Well, there you have it. Apparently, James thinks that he is a manipulative type and he can indeed be recruited as a spy. Well, I would hire him in a heartbeat. Leave thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe, goddammit, and speak to you very soon. Bye.